Hi guys, it's Jack here, graphic design book guy. For those of you who haven't visited this saucy channel already, this channel is all about graphic design books. So every single week, I read a book and then review it. The key aim of this channel is one, to teach you something about graphic design, two, to motivate you to design, and then three, to tell you what books you should get your hands on. Today, I wanna to read, I don't wanna to read to you, I want to tell you about a book how To by Michael Beirut. That's in the shop. <laughs> it was. Okay. So this book has the longest title known to man, How To Use Graphic Design to Sell Things, Explain Things, Make Things Look Better, Make People Laugh, Make People Cry, and Every Once In A While, Change The World, Don't You Love A Catchy Title. So, who is Michael Beirut? If you want to design like Michael Beirut, you need to study his body of work, which spans over five decades. This guy has worked in projects that have been uh, for millions of pounds and for free, but all in all, the quality of his work is second to none, and that's why he's a world famous designer. So, let's get into the book. Michael Beirut is one of the most famous designers in the world of design today. When he was fresh out of University of Cincinnati's College of Design, Architecture and Art in 1976, Michael first worked at Massimo and Lella Vignelli's studio in New York and ended up staying there for 10 years. After 10 years there, he moved on to world-famous Pentagram and has been there for the last 30 years. Over that time, his clients have included some reasonably large names such as the New York Times, Billboard magazine, the New York Jets and Hillary Clinton. You might have heard of some of those companies or people. As the title of this book suggests, this book covers everything to do with graphic design that Michael Beirut has touched. So right from the get-go when he was six years old and discovered graphic design until the present day. This book has over 500 illustrations and pictures and covers 36 different projects that Michael Beirut has done. What I really like, this, like about this book is Michael Beirut's honesty when it comes to the designs because a lot of the biggest designs that you see, you might think, wow, I bet that's gone through years and years of process and iteration when actually sometimes the ideas come about through serendipitous events. For example, on Saks Fifth Avenue department store in New York, Michael Beirut saw a screen image of the logo, the previous logo when they redesigned it, zoomed in and then use that to establish the new identity. So there are sometimes events like that that uh, mean that new designs can come about that are really fresh and different and dynamic. What I also love about this book is that Michael Beirut could just do all the big projects that he's been involved with, uh, like the New York Jets and um, Michigan Institute of Technology, but he also talks about free projects and just a lot smaller projects that he's worked on as well. So it's a really nice balance between projects that maybe creatives that are starting out in graphic design could see themselves doing and kind of the, the goal if you want to go into more corporate design. So my favorite two um, stories in this book are actually about um, a family nuts company called nuts.com and um, a really cool diner called The Good Diner um, so there's a real mixture in this book and it means that it's really varied and dynamic as a result. Another really cool thing about this book is the enormous glossy pages that this book is printed on. It's beautifully made and it's really visual so that you can pour over the images and really see exactly the small fine details and the thought process that's gone into making these amazing brand identities. Uh, really, really work. So the top three takeaways I have from this book. Number one is that even Michael Beirut struggles with graphic design, both in terms of the design and dealing with clients occasionally. Um, I think this is really nice to know as someone that's starting their career in design, that even after a decade, sorry, not a decade, after three decades at Pentagram, um, he's still doesn't necessarily land on the right idea um, right at the start and often can make mistakes. In fact, um, for one project, he, his work was described as uh, nauseous. 
not the best thing to hear back from a client when you first present the work. So even Michael Beirut doesn't necessarily get things right at the start and it takes work at every single project to get the result. I also find it really satisfying to know that Michael Beirut has the same problems with clients that I sometimes do as well, where the client doesn't necessarily know what he or she wants and then as a designer you're trying to piece together the information that the client has given you and give them what they're asking for when that might not actually be what they need. Um, Massimo Vignelli, uh, Michael Beirut's old boss, has a really nice quote that is Chi lo dico e chi lo nego. Um, <laughs> so I just had to do the hands there. So the quote translates that here I say it, here I deny it. And basically the quote means people are complex. They don't always know what they want. And that's kind of the beauty of graphic design, I find. It's trying to understand what people really want from what they're saying. The second biggest takeaway from this book is the phrase, the logo is an empty vessel. A logo is an empty vessel awaiting the meaning that will be poured into it by history and experience. The best thing a designer can do is make that vessel the right shape for what it's going to hold. Whether it's a wordmark logo like Facebook or a symbol logo like Apple logo, this isn't to devalue the importance of a logo, but it's simply the signature to the brand. It's important to note that whether a logo for a company has been designed by Michael Beirut or Joe Bloggs down the street, the point is that if it's a bad company, it won't work. It doesn't matter what the logo is, it's not gonna save a bad company. Third biggest takeaway from this book is to make it different, but not too different. This is a really hard one because obviously when you're designing something or doing a redesign for a, for a product, for example, or a brand identity, you want to make sure that the customer can still recognize that brand or that product, um, but to give it a new edge or a new face. This is a quote from the book and Michael Beirut says, every design solution then must navigate between comfort and cliche. It's really important that when designing something new, you don't just lose all the old traits and design uh, features of that brand. To illustrate the point, Michael talks about when they were doing the design at Pentagram for the Minnesota Children's Museum. The obvious stereotypes that could have been used in the design were smiley faces, crayons, etc. that are used in a lot of children's uh, designs. But instead, the team focused on the children playing themselves and uh, through experience, they were avoiding that cliche. So they were really studying the kids themselves and they came up with the idea of using their hands as uh, the logo identity and the brand identity itself. Michael Beirut notes that Sometimes avoiding the obvious means embracing it and wrestling it to the ground and that's exactly what they did in this project. He also notes that the antidote to stereotype is experience. So by watching the children play, it became obvious that the children's hands should be the design direction. They were the tools that the children were using to play with everything. So to conclude this video, um, if you are looking to design more logos that are more professional and maybe get into corporate design more, this book is 100% for you. If you want to design like Michael Beirut, the best thing you could possibly do is to study the work that he's already done and this book showcases 36 different projects that range from the start of his career to the end. So it really gives you a good idea of uh, the kind of projects that hopefully you can aspire to work on in the future. If you enjoyed this video, Subscribe, hit the like button, comment below if there's any books that you'd like to read. Down below as well, I'm going to put some links to other resources about Michael Beirut, an interview that he did at Google and other things like that. And there's a link to buy the book as well if you're interested in doing that. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and have a great week.